Apex Legends is killing it right now. If you haven't heard, it's the Titanfall spin-off battle royale game, and we really enjoy it here. Maybe you're a first timer hopping in, or you're just looking for a few extra little tips. Well, we got you covered, because we tried to cram everything into this video with 20 things Apex Legends doesn't exactly tell you. Starting off with number 20, sniper scopes in this game are legit. And by that, I mean, and this is from a Respawn developer, the ranging marks on every full screen sniper optic will always be totally accurate for the rifle you're using. Uh, the mill dots reshuffle in real time as you aim far up or down. According to him, use the rangefinder and line up the right tick mark to get good shots. He claims this is one of the first shooters to handle optics in this pretty impressive way, so now you know, food for thought. Next at number 19, a quick primer on colored loot. Gold equipment is the best, but it does actually have the same stats as purple equipment, but with a bonus perk. Helmet gets faster tacticals and ultimates. Armor perk is refilling shields after an execution. A backpack perk is health and shield consumables take half as long to use. A knockout shield perk is a one-time self-revive. Perks on a gun or equipment might give you a little bit of edge, so be sure to keep an eye on it when you're highlighting a weapon. And since we're talking about weapons real quick, don't underestimate the power of a good weapon. Not not only with a perk, but with good ass attachments and everything. I've seen a lot of people who want to run and gun and stress out about a battle royale game and don't take the time to use the right stuff on their gun. But I've seen some nasty clips with someone playing with a fully decked out wingman with the skull piercer attachment. That's a sight to behold. Pay attention to the loot, pay attention to the colors, but also pay attention to all the attachments. Now next at number 18, the pinging system is great. You know, a one touch button that lets you notify people for enemies, locations, loot, etc. It's great and it's really useful. One smaller thing you might not know is that, uh, say if you need extra ammo from teammates, but people aren't communicating much or don't have mics and are just relying on pinging stuff, open the inventory, highlight the weapon that you need ammo for and then ping it. Squad members will now know you're asking or looking for a certain ammo type. Communication without actually communicating. Not bad, right? Now at 17, uh, you can kick a door open with the melee attack button. Some people just didn't realize this. It can be just awesome because it's always a good way to make an entrance or you can use it to unblock a door because yeah, they actually can be apparently blocked with bodies or a trap from caustic. Some doors can also be completely destroyed. So now you know. At number 16, here's something a lot of people didn't think but it has been confirmed by Respawn. All legends have the same movement speed. It might feel like someone like Gibraltar or Caustic are slower, but they're technically not. There's a completely level playing field in this regard, so don't worry about it too much. Next at number 15, if you're grinding and you don't want to spend any real world money, which we can't blame you, you should know you get to unlock a legend at roughly level 23. By then the game will give you enough in-game currency of legend tokens to spend on one dude. That dude will either be Caustic or Mirage. So choose wisely because after that, the second one gets way more expensive the next go around. So I'd say do some research and look up their move types and see if it's something you actually want to play as. At number 14, hey, uh, just so you know, supply crates that defeated enemies drop are color coded. So if you see one with like beautiful purple accents on it, go for it. It's a good way of when things are getting heated and you need to prioritize where to run out in the open. Obviously you'd want to try for a purple crate over just like a standard one. You don't want to get stuck with some guy's crappy stuff. But still, sometimes it's the little things like this that help and the game doesn't initially point it out to you. So we're here for that. Now over at number 13, just a friendly heads up. It's not like other battle royale games. So please, don't quit the game as soon as you're killed. The way the respawn beacon works and how important the team is, there's a good chance that someone was on their way to collect your banner to possibly revive you. If they were headed to get you and suddenly you quit out and disappear, you totally screwed over your team and left them not only one man down in the moment, but also them completely running to get your banner or running to the beacon with your banner. That's like them running to get something and then suddenly it disappears and they're out in the open and they're screwed. So it's really like a multi-layered process of screwing people over. So just wait a sec, hope for a respawn and just wait it out. It's worth it, trust me, and it's definitely worth it for your teammates. At number 12, this is definitely a beginner one, but keep an ear open for a weird sound. You can come across these little triangle robot guys hidden in spots, and they're basically good loot pinatas. You'll almost always get something purple, and that's a really good ass guarantee. It could be a game changer for you. A purple rated weapon can of course totally turn the tides of battle. 
Uh, also, you should know, you can smack them with melee so you don't waste any bullets. Because ammo is precious, so you need that. Now at number 11, when you're dropping, consider looking for and landing on these hovercrafts. Uh, these are usually like total nightmare zones when a lot of people drop onto it, but survive through it and you'll end up starting right out of the gate with some pretty good loot. Like I keep saying, it could be a total game changer for you. Also, keep an eye out on the ground because they will actually land at certain parts of the map and there's still good stuff in there, so go for it. Coming down to number 10, if you're in a squad that has someone playing Lifeline, make a point to give them any accelerance you have because it helps reduce the cooldown for her ultimate ability, which can be super useful at a pinch, and you can gear up with a bunch of cool packages and whatnot. The ultimate charge isn't super fast to begin with, so being able to get multiple supply drops for your squad can make all the difference sometimes. Now at number nine, let's keep talking about some character stuff. Pathfinder is super cool. I mean, he's like a cool robot man with a grappling hook, which definitely grabbed our attention right after his character reveal. What they don't tell you is that the grappling hook is good for more than just traversal and getting out of sticky situations. You can also use it in a combat scenario. If you fire your grappling hook at a dude, it'll actually grab onto them and pull them towards you, scorpion style, and that's really awesome and can be pretty useful. If you catch a guy alone, but you're with your squad, you pull one dude and then it's one against three, you got this. Who said the chappy robot was bad, huh? At number eight, are you running through an area in a firefight and you see a wraith portal? Well, these things can actually go both ways and work for anyone, friend or foe. So don't be afraid to jump through it when you're in pursuit of an enemy or you just wanna see where it goes or you want a quick escape. You might get lucky and get the drop on someone or uh, who knows, they might be waiting for you and give you a shotgun blast to the face. Basically these portals, when they're not yours, unattended, high risk, high reward. Now at number seven, if you've played as Bloodhound or even just spectated a teammate in a match, you know that their tracking ability can be really useful. But what you might not know is that you can actually ping tracks so teammates can also find them. It's a really good way to just keep your whole squad in the loop and coordinated, and it really can help give you the edge if you do it right. Now at number six, not sure how many of you out there have unlocked Mirage yet. In our experiences, we see way more people rocking the gas dad, Caustic. But if you have him, uh, his holotech can actually trick threat scopes as well as Bloodhound's tracking ability. So as far as they're concerned, that decoy is the real deal. So I guess plan your strategies accordingly, and we can say that about every character. Know your role, know your abilities, know how to use them. Because in Apex Legends, a lot of times, it's not always about offense, it's about defense and trickery. Now at number five, this one's kinda obvious, and it's sort of a topic that'd be covered in Battle Royale Game 101 if there was such a thing, but when you holster or put away your gun, your movement speed is slightly increased when running and climbing up ladders and stuff. And yeah, like we said, if you're a Battle Royale vet, you probably know this, but for those not in the know, putting your gun away might give you that little bit of extra movement speed you need when you're just outside the circle and you need that little boost to run and not die. So yeah, keep that in mind, it might save your ass. But at number four, all right, another thing players might not realize, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with the Titanfall 2 multiplayer, you can actually do sort of like a peak ledge hang thing when traversing the environment. This is done by running at a wall or a ledge and ceasing forward momentum when you hit the top, which will let you just sort of hang there. You can peek around from there, drop down, continue forward movement to climb and vault over, or you can even jump off in the direction opposite the wall, which can help increase your mobility and let you reach other spots. It's a really good way to also just kick off into a good slide. It's a very, very cool aspect of the gameplay that is really easily overlooked. Simple tiny traversal thing that can actually help you out. And again, it's something the game does not tell you at all. At number two, okay, it's officially confirmed that Apex Legends has damage scaling, depending on where you shoot your enemy. So when you shoot a dude in the foot or leg, it's not gonna do a whole lot of damage. It's really not a lot if you look at the damage markers. That said, shooting them in the arm, the torso, or obviously the head will chip off substantially more health and just put you in a much better place. It's nothing new and it's seen in pretty much every shooter, but sometimes beginners just don't realize, which is why we're including it here. In a battle royale game especially, this is important because you can so often turn a corner and panic and shoot a guy in the legs, but I've actually seen it firsthand. You can put like a whole clip into a guy's legs and then still be left up shit's creek. So be careful, be mindful of where you're shooting. Now at number one, here's something if we didn't initially know. When you're downed, if one member of your squad picks up your banner, either one is actually able to resurrect you at the respawn point. It doesn't necessarily have to be the person who grabbed your banner after you got shot. It's just as long as the squad has it, you're good. 
This is a really cool move and definitely makes it a little easier, but it's something just most people don't realize. And if you don't, it definitely puts you at a slight disadvantage as far as planning and strategies go. So now you know. And that's basically what we could say about this whole video. A bunch of little things that might actually help you. These are things that we were surprised the game really didn't tell us or things we just had to kind of figure out ourselves. So we're hoping if you are playing Apex Legends out there, and these might help you. But of course, this is a this is a fairly deep game. It's a battle royale game. So we wanna hear from you guys out there. If you have any other tips for beginners or battle royale newcomers, feel free to share them down there. We'll be down there as much as we can. But of course, if you enjoyed this video and maybe learned a thing or two, clicking the like button is the best way you can really help us out. And we appreciate it. But if you are new, consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.